Give him glory. Give him glory. Because God's going to get the glory out of this. Give him glory. 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 Because God's going to get the glory out of this. I'm going to see, because I'm going to see a victory. Come on, sing it with me this morning. For the battle, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see, because I'm going to see a victory. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray over our audience this morning. Me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith here this morning. We join our faith with your people. We pray for a real strong impartation of the wisdom and the knowledge of God from the scriptures. The apostle Paul says the scriptures are able to make thee wise. Your word says to us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study to show ourselves approved unto God a workman who needs not to be ashamed because we correctly divide the word of truth minister to your people strengthen them the apostle Peter says desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow by it some people are getting milk and some are getting strong meat help us all to grow in the things of God and in a stronger relationship with the Lord and help us to run this devil off that's trying to rob your people in the name of Jesus put him to flight God put him to flight in the name of Jesus we pray somebody say amen oh blessed be the name of Jesus so glad to be with you again on this morning as we continue sorry about that so glad to be with you on this morning as we continue our series on how to keep your miracle from God and on this morning we are talking about how to recover a miracle you lost how do you get back what the devil have stolen from you my God you, you can't cover this topic without talking about it because I shared with you how that gentleman Dexter began to lose his miracle and the minute the minute the minute the minute we, we sat down with that family and began to explain to them how these things work. The fire of God came alive in that man's spirit and he was healed right down at the table. No, no laid hands, no screaming, no hollering. The power of God through the word of God moved and drove the devil out and all his lying symptoms. Send him right back to hell where it belongs. Come on, somebody. You got to stand your ground scenes. You got to defend your territory. Watch this. I, I want to I wanna take you into the word now. How to recover a miracle you lost as you would see in the life of David. Because the same attacks that these people came under in the Old Testament, it's an example for us on how we need to get back what we lost. Are you hearing me? And how to get the victory over the enemy. Watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 through 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had, of, had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten it and burned it with fire. Now Ziklag was given to David by a Philistine king. Ziklag was became the city it was a city that belonged to David and David actually went out to help the Philistines he was he was offering them their help because that's just the kind of man David was he had integrity he was grateful for what they had, did for him but there were some lords of the Philistines who didn't trust David they said uh uh but you see David's journey to go and help the Philistines took him three days. So that, that was three days. He was in home. He was in, in his own city. And when, that, when the strong man is not there, the enemy is going to move into attack. 
like they say, when the cat goes, the rat takes over. You you heard that saying before, right? <laughs> Lord have mercy. When 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 the cat leaves, the rats take over. And as long as the cat is there, patrolling through that house, them little mice ain't coming out because the cat's gonna rip them to pieces, right? So so David was in there, and this was when the enemy moved in to attack David's family and his land, his possessions. And sometimes when we are focusing on something else is when the enemy tries to move in to rob us. The Bible says in verse two here, and they, this is the enemy, they robbed David's city, burned it to the ground and had taken the women captives and that were therein. They, they didn't kill any, they didn't slew any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. I tell you, the enemy, he comes to steal, he comes to kill and he comes to destroy. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. Oh, my God. Can you imagine when they came and all they saw was smoke coming up? Where their houses were built, it was just burned to the ground, just ashes. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Man, that, that's enough to drive somebody insane. So when David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Lord have mercy. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They began to cry. And some of you been there. Have you ever lost something and you cried? Yeah, you almost like we say the terms you cried your eyes out. You know, that's just the best way we can put it. That means you cry until you didn't have no more tears to, to, to cry. Come on, somebody. Oh, we all have been there. Now watch this. That was the exact place David, this mighty man of God, he found himself at this place. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Now, you men don't get no ideas here now. God permitted certain things in the Old Testament to give them an opportunity to bring them to a place where they can fully obey God. Don't even try talking, but you, you, you want two wives. <laughs> Glory to God. So the Bible says... So they wept until they had no more power to weep. I want to jump right over to verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. Well, who wouldn't if you lose that much stuff? Come on, somebody. You'd be stressed out too. Don't play Superman here. Yeah? You're a human being. Yeah, we know you're full of the Holy Ghost and all of that good stuff. But you a man of like passions just like all the rest of us. You pain, you hurt like everybody else. Don't even get to that point where you're playing that positive confession that you're not willing to face reality. That's not, that's not faith. That's foolishness. David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Don't let church folk make you feel like you're unspiritual because you're crying and weeping, man. T tell David. David. Tell David he ain't got no faith. This man wept until he ain't had a tear drop left in his head. Come on. In, in his eye, in his tear ducts. Tell him he ain't a man of God. I mean, we got we to gotta quit being crazy in the church. Amen? Come on, somebody. David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now, this is the mistake his men made. They were so stressed out over the loss of their family, they didn't want to blame David. Now, now, now this, I'm sorry, I, I got to park here for a minute. How, how are you going to, you were with David, how are you going to blame him? You, you were right there along with David going to help the Philistines. All of y'all had to leave to go, to go be responsible men. And now that you come back, you won't blame. How could you blame him? It ain't his fault. And you see, the, 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 this is exact. I got to park here now. This is exactly what the enemy does. If the Holy Spirit works through a ministry to bring their healing, to bring their miracle, man, the devil begins to attack that person with those lying symptoms. And then they begin to talk bad about the minister. That's the last thing you want to do. Put your mouth on the man of God. They begin to say, oh, this ain't real. I knew it was fake all along. You, you side with the devil. No wonder you're losing your healing. Don't side with the devil. He's a liar, saints. He is a liar and the father of all lies. Jesus said the devil is the first one to lie. Come on. He told Adam and Eve, had God said, don't eat of the fruit. Oh, that's not true. You can eat it. Your eyes going to be open. Uh, it was open all right. 
Lord have mercy. You can't listen to the devil. Don't side with him. Rebuke him. Tell him to get out of here. You see, a ministry like this is bringing the anointing and the power of God to you. We, we know some traditional church. And so because, the, because you're being introduced to the power of God, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God, miracle signs and wonders, the devil don't want you around that stuff. He wants you to just be a traditional Christian who don't see nothing the Bible promised. I'm sorry. I refuse to go on with it. I told God, I'm going to fast until I see everything come to pass that you promise in the Bible. I, I just can't go on playing church as usual. No signs, wonders, miracles. You crazy? Man, I'll lose, my, I'll lose my mind. Come on, somebody. I got to have the power of God. I got to have the anointing. I can't play church. I cannot play church. I got to have God's power. So, so David was stressed out. And David said to Abiathar the priest, you got to have authority in your life. You got to have somebody you can call on. You got to have somebody who can come in agreement with you. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, bring me the ephod so I can seek God. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, you will recover all glory to God. God's telling you this morning, you will recover all. Everything God gave you that the devil stole, you will recover all. Dear God, dear God. And through a series of events, through a series of events, God allow David to find somebody who knew exactly where the Amalekites had taken David's stuff, his possessions, his wealth, his silver, his gold, his wife, his kids. My God, my God. And the Bible says, watch this now. I want to, I want to take you straight into the action, man. Verse 16. Verse 16, the Bible says, and when this man that David those had found had brought him to where the Amalekites had his family tied up as captives in all his silver and gold, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth. Listen, listen to the enemy. They were eating, drinking, and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines. That was Ziklag. And out of the land of Judah. So they had robbed David's city that the Philistines gave him. And they robbed. The city where David, the tribe, and the land where David was from. The enemy really attacked David. Do you see this? This was a demonic blow. Ah, uh, but I dare someone to lift your hands to heaven and say, it ain't over until God says it's over. It ain't over until God says it's over. Watch this. And they were partying. I dare someone to say, devils, the, the party is about to be over. The party is about to be over. The Bible says, and David smote them. Glory to God. He began to attack. He smote them from the, from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. David gave them a, I mean, he kicked their backsides. He stumped them in the ground. He whipped them. He defeated them. He annihilated them. He got rid of them. He beat them in the east. He whipped them in the west. He stumped them in the north. And he knocked them out in the south. In every direction. Everywhere he turned. God gave him victory. The Bible says, your enemy that come against you one way, they will flee seven different ways. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. David began to whip him. He began to stump him. He began to attack him. He began to annihilate him. He began to subdue them. He began to put them under his feet. He got his wife back. He got his children back. He got his wealth back. He got his animals back. Everything David lost. The Bible says, and David recovered all. Somebody shout. I'm about to recover all. Devil, you robbed me for the last time. God is helping me to get it back. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Let me get to the good part. My God, David said, He prepares a table before me. 
in the presence of my enemies. He anoint my head with oil. My cover runs over. Surely, someone shout, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of God forever and ever and ever. Say, devil, I come to get it back. I come to take it back. I come to recover all. And the Bible says, David beat them so bad that there were several hundred out of the camp. They fled for their lives. They ran in every direction. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Somebody shout, give me my healing. Give me my financial breakthrough. Give me my marriage. Give me my family. Give me my job. Give me my business. Give me my ministry. Give me my school education. I'm taking it. The Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, I've suffered violence. I'm the violent. Take it by force. Who are the violent? The violent are the born again, the saved, the sanctified, the full of the Holy Ghost. Us who believe the word, who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? He that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The devil is under my feet. I come to get it back. Someone shout, I'm going to get violent. You got to get aggressive. You got to get radical. Even if they don't understand you, I'm going all the way. I'm going to have it all. I'm getting it back. I refuse to roll over and play dead. I refuse to bury my head like an ostrich in the dirt. I'm taking it. Someone shall take it. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it. I'm recovering all. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody help me give him praise. Hallelujah. We recovering all. We cover you in the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. We cover you in the blood of Jesus. We cover you in the blood of Jesus. You will recover all. Some people are being healed while they are watching this broadcast. Some people are rising up in their faith and in their spirit. People are rising up and beginning to defend their territory. You got to fend the devil off. You got to resist him. And the Bible says, he will flee from you. We cover you this morning. In the blood of Jesus, we cover you. We cover you. You got the victory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Sing it. Give him glory. Mighty God. Give him glory. God's going to get it. Because God's going to get the glory. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's do that again. Give him glory. It's all right, Kev. Give him glory. Give him, give him, give him glory this morning. God's going to get it. Because God's going to get the glory out of this. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him, give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, cause God's gonna get the glory out of this. Oh, come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. I got my God. Glory to God. Listen on this morning, we want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel. To do so, you can visit us online right now at seanbender.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. 
You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. And if you give through Zell, make sure you email us your name and mailing address so we can send you a tax-deductible donation letter. It's doing things right. Amen. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. If you give through the Ministry Cash App, make sure to email us your name and your Cash App username so we can send you a thank you letter by email. Or your mailing address would be even better. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. We love you. We appreciate you. Subscribe if you didn't have a chance to subscribe so you will not miss any of our daily devotionals, our morning prayer broadcast. And remember to share this video with somebody that you know need a word of encouragement. Share it, share it, share it. Help me get this word around the world. We love you. Me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We don't take you for granted. We appreciate you. And we will continue this entire week on this series, How to Keep Your Miracle from God. We want to hear from you. God bless you. We love you. See you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.